Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place if you're an agent, you're a team leader, you're a broker owner, you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and you're more importantly looking to attract more high-end and luxury clients not just listings, but also buyers. Well, you're in a treat uh, for today's episode. Today, we're gonna be talking about a significant sale that we recently had, a monumental sale in the Chicagoland market and how we landed this client. We're gonna share with you how we retain the client. Uh, They've been on the market for eight years and out of those eight years, six with us. So keeping a client happy so that they don't leave you, they don't fire you, they don't hire somebody else, uh, it's not easy. So I'm going to share with you our journey in how we attracted and we landed the Empire Mansion. It, this home was the backdrop for the, uh, the TV show Empire that was on Fox for six years. Empire, Terrence Howard was in it, known as Lucius Lyon. This was the main character's home. Don't forget, if you have any questions, real estate specifically luxury related, please shoot us a note. We have some really exciting things as more and more people are comfortable with trainings. We're going to be doing more trainings across the country. We're also looking for people that want to teach continuing education. They want to basically take our content and we'll teach you it and you can teach it to others. We're approved for continuing education now in Florida, Texas, and Georgia, and we're looking to expand that in 2021 and beyond. So if you are interested shoot me a note. My email is Michael at Marketing Luxury Group, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. And don't forget, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and let me know what questions you have luxury related. Let's get into today's show, talking about how I landed the Empire Mansion, as well as taking you through the journey. So I'm a part of a lot of different groups and organizations, and we put this seven and a half million dollar listing under contract Uh, at the time of this recording within the last week. And we've been featured in Mansions Global because of this, as well as Cranes, which is kind of like the Reader's Digest for Chicagoland affluent readers. And I'm part of a a lot of various groups, as I mentioned. And I, I threw it out there. Would anybody be interested in how I landed this first monumental trophy listing some six years ago? Uh, At the time, it was a $13 million listing and how I kept the client for six years, I retained them, as well as how did I get this property sold and and some of the best stories that have come through this amazing listing. And I had a lot of people say, yes, that would be great. So that's how we are coming to you with today's episode. Again, don't forget to leave us a like or a review if you're getting value from this episode or previous episodes. Again, luxurylistingpodcast.com. You can find other episodes there or look up luxury listing specialist on the web, and you'll find tons of stuff about us, including our vlog, and as I mentioned, previous podcasts. So let's get back to this topic. Uh, This particular home was originally listed in August of 2013. So over eight years ago, it first went on the market just under 16 million. And there's an old adage in real estate, maybe you've heard it before, you wanna be the firstborn, the second wife, and the third real estate agent. Well, in this case, I was the third real estate agent for this amazing home. And I wanna talk to you about how this opportunity came to fruition, how it came to us. The answer is Facebook. You know, I went to high school with the owner's niece and she had seen me doing some outside the box creative marketing, we posting about it. We are known to do some of the best lifestyle videos Uh, I was the first to do them in the Midwest. And of course, others are doing them now where you bring in actors or cars and props. I brought in horses. I filmed from helicopters. I've incorporated planes into video shoots and my kids and four wheelers and Moscow mules and, and, and you name it. 
we're always looking to raise the bar and and uh, do something creative so that people talk about the property, which I believe is your job, not just to have the seller's best interest in mind. Of course, that's your job, but the other job of yours is to position the home so that more eyeball, more qualified people can see it, view it, and you have a higher probability of getting it sold for top dollar. And I believe video is one, one uh, media type that you can do that more so than just descriptions or even photos. A, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I think a video is worth sometimes a thousand pictures. So in this case, I went to high school with, as I mentioned, the owner's niece, and she had seen me doing all these amazing things. And be honest with you, if I were to have a physical newsletter, she would not be on that newsletter. I used to look at Facebook originally as a platform where if I some, saw somebody at, at the local grocery store, and I didn't recognize them or didn't know them that well, or didn't want to hang out with them or have a beer, then I probably shouldn't accept their friend request. That was early on several years ago, but then I looked at it totally different because you never know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So I have friends on our Facebook, on my Facebook page or my LinkedIn or social media that honestly, I'd walk right by them in the supermarket and maybe not even recognize them. And so I looked at things a little bit differently than a lot of agents do. And so this particular person was someone that I liked in high school. She was, you know, considered a friend, acquaintance, but I didn't know her that well um, where she would be in my email blast, my database, but we were connected through social media. And that's the power of Facebook or LinkedIn or, or even YouTube or your, your website or your vlog. And so that's how I got the opportunity. The home was listed at the time. Uh, check with your broker. Every state uh, is pretty consistent with this next thing, but you can never solicit a homeowner that's currently listed for sale. However, if they're listed for sale and they contact you, and that's actually what happened, unbeknownst to me, she had passed along my info and said, hey, I know your home's been on with a couple agents. This guy, I'm seeing what he's doing, doing some creative outside the box stuff. Give him a ring. And so I got a call out of the blue. Um, Jen, Jenny did say, hey, my uncle might be calling you. Um, and he did. We set up a meeting. Uh, again, it was a great meeting. I talked about what I would do. You never talk backwards as far as, you know, oh, they should have done this. They should have done that. But you talk about what you're going to do. And he was impressed. At that actual appointment, I told him I'm by far going to be probably one of the most expensive agents you interview. But let me share how you can net more money. Because I can tell you the previous agent that he was listed with was charging significantly less, like like one or 2% less than we were charging, but he saw the value. The other thing he asked me is how many homes have I sold? And, and this town is called Barrington Hills, Illinois. Beautiful town, a uh, lot of horse country, a lot of equestrian, a lot of grand estates, and a lot of former CEOs lived out there, but it's been a, a tough market. Uh, it's not been a market where there's a lot of sales above $4 million over the last decade. I can, I can count on one hand how many there have been. So I told him, you know, I hadn't sold any, but if you want that neighborhood expert, you know, you've just gone with a couple agents that, you know, are more neighborhood experts than I am, and that didn't get the home sold. So if you want someone that's outside the box creative, you're talking to the right guy. I can promise you I'm, I'm going to give tireless efforts. I'm going to be creative. We're going to do some videos. We're going to do a lot of digital and do some print marketing. And again, he didn't push back on our fee and he saw the value, so he hired me. So that's how I got this. At the time, we, we marketed at $12.9 million. I didn't even know it at the time. Uh, when I first met him, I did, but when he first called me, I didn't, that this was the backdrop for the TV show Empire uh, on Fox that was on for six series, uh, six seasons. So I'm gonna share with you some great stories about this home. But let's talk about retention. You know, sometimes after six days or six weeks or six months, the seller's ready to fire their listing agent, the listing agent's ready to fire the seller. We were uh, together for over six years from the time I met with them to the time we get, got the home under contract, six years. And he's a business, no BS type of guy. And some people might think, you know, those type of relationships are difficult to have, but communication is key. Uh, being honest with them, uh, putting their best interest first always is key to retain a client for 
longer than the original listing agreement, in this case, many times longer than the original listing agreement. So retention is really, it comes down to being honest, communication, understanding this personality profile. Uh, so this gentleman was, you know, high D bottom line, uh, but you, you know, you had to listen, of course, but also, uh, you know, don't sugarcoat things. Um, he, he was creative on some stuff, some other things that I didn't agree with. And I shared with him in a nice tactful way. And I said, I can appreciate where you're coming from. Um, maybe we should try this, but I also, uh, you know, was willing to be open to some of his suggestions as well. So being flexible is important, but you talk about a stale listing, this home had been on for a long time. So we had to be creative, whether it be canceling and relisting, whether it be, you know, photo shoots, we took three different reshoots of the original photo shoot. And we did two different videos, lifestyle videos with drones and people and, and um, one was with his music, which is more classical. The, the last one was uh, my my taste, if you will, and more of a younger crowd. And, and so it's not cheap to market a home like this. We did several full page ads and various publications and easily, easily, you know, probably had twenty five to thirty thousand dollars invested in it at the you know, and that's a low number, probably twice that amount. So you might be saying, well, that messes up your days on the market. That That's a long-term investment. And I knew going into it, based on there hadn't been a sale above $4 million in a decade in this particular market, that this was going to be a difficult sale. But I also looked at it as an opportunity to showcase my talents. I also looked at it as a magnet to attract more clientele or prospects, whether it be buyer inquiries or whether it be potential listings, having this home on our website definitely looks good and gives credibility, um, but I wanted to get it sold. I, I That was the bottom line. And so being creative and sharing with others, bouncing ideas off others is something that we did. So just to, to recap, and then I wanna go into how we will able to get it sold and share with you some great stories. There's four major points I wanna to cover today. Again, number one, I shared with you like the backdrop and how we got the listing. Number two, I just shared with you how we retained it through ongoing communication, being honest, being on top of the market. Um, so when there's not a lot of data out there, let them know that, you know, let them know when there are significant sales or when there aren't significant sales in their in their market. So you can manage their expectations because it'd be one thing if the house down the street and the guy behind him is selling and everybody else is selling price similar to his, but that wasn't the case. So be, having your finger on the pulse locally and globally and being upfront, uh, and that's one way to retain somebody. You know, Theodore, uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt once said, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. But Daniel Kamen, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, once said, people would rather do business with someone they like and they trust rather than someone they don't, even if that likable person is offering a lower quality product and service at a higher price. Now, I'd like to think that I offered a higher quality product and service, but the point is be likable, have an ongoing communication. It's no different with starter buyers or entry-level clients, and in this case, a high net worth individual. So that's bullet point number two on how I retained it. Number three, we looked at how to sell it. How did we sell it? We looked at all forms of media from print marketing to digital, to video, to social media platforms, through word of mouth marketing, through mailers. We've done it all. I had an event at this home where we brought in 40, a car club, an exotic car club with, I'm talking Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches. Uh, and literally we had an exotic car club host their event at this property. We had 40 exotic cars, 80 high net worth individuals. We took a class photo. We gave tours of the property. I gave out great print collateral, gave out prizes. They had a, a winning team and we gave out prizes. I, I gave a state of the luxury union address, so to speak, to the entire group. So being creative is part of it and, and not putting your best foot forward initially but all the time, right? So continually bounce ideas off of people, learn from other people. If other people are doing some creative things, implement those. There's no easy button to attract these opportunities and to keep them and to get them sold. So what I tell agents is none of it works all the time, but all of it works the majority of the time. So do a little bit of everything, but be systematized in the way you do it. 
you know, this home was on the backdrop for the TV show Empire. It was named Architectural Digest, most beautiful home for sale in Illinois. I've shown this home to celebrities, um, both business owners, celebrities, multi, multi-millionaires, athletes. And we've also had tons of fake inquiries, fake pre-approval letters, fake, you name it. So you have to do your due diligence. You got to do your research on who the buyers are. And you got to be honest, if you don't think this person's real or you can't verify that they're real, ultimately, I go back to the seller and say, here's what I found out, or I haven't been able to find up anything. And I leave it up to them. I once had a showing at this home where we had 18 people come through at the same time. The buyer was from China. The buyer's agent gave me a heads up that they're bringing her family member through. So we literally had five agents, five agents uh, at the property. I was giving the grand tour. I had somebody bringing up the rear. I called that the kind of the caboose of the tour. And I had a couple other agents for wandering purposes to make sure people didn't wander off or they weren't touching or taking photos. So privacy and safety and security are really important for these types of homes. And the seller appreciated that we did those things. So those are some, some of the fun stories that we've had. Um, and we have it under contract. We have it under contract. And although a lot of people are moving out of the city to the burbs and a lot of people are leaving the state of Illinois, this buyer was local. And he just happened to be doing really well because of the pandemic uh, in, the, in his industry did really well. And he made a lot more money during the pandemic. And so he was able to buy a home where maybe a year ago wasn't in a position to look at this price point. So that's a good reminder that the buyer could be under your, you know, in your own neighborhood, so to speak. Uh, I've heard agents say when they are the second or third agent to the seller, well, the buyer's not local because if, if so, they would have bought it already. And I disagree with that statement. And I just shared with you a story why I disagree with that. I mean, this home has been featured, as I mentioned, Architectural Digest, Mansion Global, the Chicago Tribune, you name it. Uh, it has been Wall Street Journal. It's been featured in it. We did a training. I did my luxury designation training in Chicago, NAREB, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which I highly recommend you check them out, uh, which launched, I think, 75 years ago now. NAREB, uh, you should join a, cha uh, a chapter in your local market. NAREB's a great organization. Um, and we had our designation class. We took uh, which NAREB was the primary sponsor of. And we took uh, you know, 25, 30 agents. We took a tour bus and we toured them through the home and they absolutely loved it. So to, to recap, I want to share with you the four big takeaways. How I landed this $13 million listing that currently is at seven and a half, one through social media, Facebook. You never know somebody who knows somebody. People are watching just because they're not liking or commenting on your, your, your post. Be consistent, be consistent. And if you don't have those high-end and unique properties, leverage others in your brokerage. As I mentioned, we are growing our organization. We're growing our team, people that might wanna train and teach our courses. So if you're interested, let me know, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. And if you're getting value from this podcast or others, please leave us a like or review. So number one, you just don't know where your client or prospect's coming from. Number two, we retain them through ongoing communication, being honest, being likable, uh, understanding where the market is, where it's going, not just locally, but globally. Number three, we were able to sell it based on being consistent, but also not leaving any stone unturned, whether it be digital media, print, video, photo shoots, press, PR, uh, creativity with tours, nominating this home for various awards. We did it. And again, those are some of the great stories uh, that we, we have. I mean, we're still getting inquiries on this property. So that I want to encourage you. I share my story with you today so that you know that, yes, on the surface, you might say six years. I've never won a six-year uh, six listing, but, but on the same token, it will be a six-figure payout. And um, again, diversify your portfolio. Don't just specialize in, the, you know, in one thing, but diversification, I think, is key. And I will tell you, I think the fastest credibility for you as an agent, a team leader, a broker owner, to get that street credibility 
from your database and your sphere and people that know you, like you, and trust you. And matter of fact, people that don't know you that well or like you and trust you is when you land that first trophy listing or you consistently attract those high-end and unique properties. With that being said, if you want to nominate another topic or you'd like to hear from somebody and you think somebody would be a great guest, please let us know. Leave us a like, leave us a review, and keep raising the bar in real estate. And remember, prove others wrong. My name is Michael Lafito. You've been great. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.